the Great White Invasion. This shark has been here for hours. Chris decides to get a closer look without disturbing her. A paddleboard is a great way to approach a shark. Firstly, it's very quiet and completely non-invasive. Secondly, it gives me an elevated position from which that I can actually see into the water, see how the shark's moving, and by knowing their behavior, it puts me in a position where I'm comfortable to interact with them. It's certainly something I wouldn't go and recommend to people to just go hop on a paddleboard or kayak and go paddle with these animals. Right underneath you. I'll take some shots, circling, circling. But I'm always respectful of the fact that this is a great predator, and certainly, if it wanted to, could take me out very easily. Behind you. I had a camera mounted to my forehead, and that gave you a really good perspective of just how big these sharks were. The board I was on was 11 foot 6, and you'll see the shark is comfortably the size of the board. I was paddling alongside a roughly 4 metre great white, about 13 foot long here. And I'm working out bloody hard, and the shark is just effortlessly cruising through the shallows. You see it right in front of me here, at least the length of the board that I'm on. On one particular occasion, I got so excited that I nearly lost my balance. That is one big shark. The shark was swimming straight towards me, and it would have been very interesting if I had fallen in the water. In other places around the world where white sharks come close to shore, they face tremendous pressures such as fishing, pollution, and fast-moving boats. Yet here we have an incredible example, one of the last remaining examples of where they can come in and do their thing naturally without us interfering in their world. So, if great whites come inshore for their own reasons that have nothing to do with humans, what could those reasons be? Shark Week premieres July 31st at 9, only on Discovery.